In this video, we'll look at how to design a messaging application such as a WhatsApp or Telegram. First things first, we'll gather the requirements. So as we know that on a messaging application, you can talk to a single person or to a group. So are we designing it only for one-on-one -on -one chats or group chats as well? And do we need to send text messages only? or we would be sending images, videos, audios and everything. Are we looking at this problem from front end side as well or only back end would suffice? So for the sake of simplicity, let's focus on one on one messaging as of now and assume our application sends text messages only and design at back end level would suffice because including front end would make this problem very big. So for now, we'll only design at back end. Next, let's talk numbers. So how many users are using our application? Another good question to ask would be how many messages are we expecting in a day? And what's the size of one text message? Let's assume 1 lakh users are using our application. Each user sends 50 messages a day, which makes the total messages to be 50 lakh messages, which is nothing but 5 million messages. So if we assume that each message takes 8 KB, so 5 million into 8 KB, that would come out to be 40 GBs of data per day. Let's look at non-functional requirements next. So if a user is using our application and it shows that our application is down due to maintenance, then this is not a good customer feedback. Another thing is if a person is using our application, uh, to send message to his or her friend, then it should be fast enough, unlike the older times. So from the previous slide, we are able to identify that our application needs to be up 24 into 7, which is another name of saying the application is highly available. Another thing is that it should have low latency, which means the messages should be sent very fast. Next thing to consider is that should we go ahead with HTTP or anything else? So I've written two APIs here, one to send a message and one to receive a message with the conversation ID being the ID, which is shared by two persons when they communicate. And uh, when you send a message, that would be a post call to the server with the message in the body and a response a server can give 200 being okay. And then there is a read message, which is also a similar API, just it's a get call, which would fetch you a list of messages. So will there be a problem in implementing this from a client to server kind of protocol or will it work? Let's see. So let's imagine a user A wants to send a message to user B using HTTP protocol. So a user will send message to the server and a server will reply, let's say 200 if the message is successfully posted on the server. But how come user B will get this message? One way can be as discussed in the previous slide is a user B will request for the message. It will Put a, it will push a get call to the server and the server can respond back with the message if there is any for user B. But the problem here is that how come user B will know when to request for the message? If let's say user B requests periodically from the server, will it add an extra load in case there are no messages for user B and user B still requests periodically from the server? Another thing to ask yourself is, is there any other way of server sending messages to the user directly without user requesting for it? I hope the problem is visible here that if user B keeps on requesting for messages to the server and server has nothing for user B at that time, it will be an extra load on the server, which is actually not required in case there are no messages for user B. So, we should ideally look for something wherein the server can directly send messages to the user without user actually requesting for it. So our answer to the previous problem is WebSockets. So WebSocket is nothing just a client server protocol 
where a handshake an http handshake takes place after which the connection gets open and there is a bidirectional messaging channel that gets open using which server can send messages directly to client without client actually requesting for it and even if the channel gets closed from one side the connection is closed so this is how a web socket connection is different from an http connection and we'll be going ahead with web sockets so different clients will actually use our application which will initiate a different web socket connection with the server so of course if there are many users that are onboarded to our application with increasing load every day then our servers should be horizontally scalable which means that there we should be able to add more number of servers now here comes a problem if let's say there is an open connection of user 1 with server n and a message comes to user 1 from user 2 which is received by server n plus 1 so for that purpose we would have to have a service which will return our socket server id for some user because if there is already an open connection with some other server then we should ideally use that connection and not create a new one so for that there will be a user mapping service which will return socket server id for an already open connection the other thing is that uh, there should be a db to store the messages and other information and uh, i have decided to go ahead with a no sql db because of the data that we saw earlier and the major part of data would look something like this with a conversation id message id a timestamp and the actual message another reason of using a no sql db is because in future more number of users will use our application that will push more data to our servers and no sql db scales very easily as compared to sql dbs and there are no joins that i can see right now on this tables okay so this is okay if user a is sending message to user b and user b is online but what if user b is offline we should design something for that as well so for that reason the message will be pushed in a queue from that queue a notification service will use the external phone manufacturer's notification server to push notification directly to their phones using their manufacturer's servers so some of the examples are in apple there is called something as apple push notification service in android it is firebase cloud messaging and there are similar in others